After a team of scientists reach out to the stars to find alien life forms, they are sent alien DNA, which they splice together with human DNA, where they create Seal, a female alien human hybrid whom is growing at a rapid rate. Seal escapes from the lab after the scientists try to execute her, where she metamorphosizes into a full grown adult, played by the utterly gorgeous Natasha Henstridge where she is on the prowl in LA to find a human mate so she can reproduce and kill anyone who gets in her way. A team of scientists and experts led by Ben Kingsley set out to capture Syl and to put a stop to her lustful killing spree. In this 1995 science fiction horror movie co-starring Michael Madsen and Forrest Whitaker. So today we're looking into species. The movie where Natasha Henstridge wants to bang someone so she can have alien babies. But before we get started, I need to address an error I made in my previous episode about Blade. When talking about the casting possibilities, I said that actor Patrick McGoohan was cast as the Whistler character, when it was in fact Chris Christopherson. What happened was, is that the article I was reading said that McGoohan was considered for Whistler, and sadly my brain just got the information jumbled. Some people were pretty pissed off about this and accused me of not being a fan of Blade. To which I said that I am a fan, I'm just not familiar with the actors McGoohan and Christopherson, hence why for me, the info was easy to get scrambled. To which some people were like, Oh, how dare you! How could you not know who Christopherson is? <sighs> so, yeah, this is me saying I got that piece of information wrong and I'm correcting it. So, can we all be friends again? Hashtag forgive Minty. So let's check out 10 things that you didn't know about species and just keep our fingers crossed that I don't make any errors this time or otherwise the fire and pitchforks are coming my way. Let's check it out. Number 10, Source of Inspiration. Species was the brainchild of the movie's writer and co-producer Dennis Feldman. During the 80s, Feldman had co-produced Just One of the Guys and the supernatural comedy The Golden Child. However, it was in 1987 while making the movie Real Men that Feldman got the idea for Species. Incidentally, Real Men is also a movie about alien life forms coming to Earth. Only it's played more for laughs, being more of a spoof starring Jim Belushi and John Ritter. Feldman also read an article by 2001 A Space Odyssey author Arthur C. Clarke about the possibility of alien beings visiting Earth via a spaceship. This got Feldman thinking that if alien beings were that advanced, they would be too sophisticated to make contact via a big spaceship. And he came up with the concept of making contact with humans via information by sending signals and transmissions of code and other genetic tech. And thus the seeds were planted in Feldman's mind for what would become species. Number nine, the original story was quite different. Feldman's first treatment of species was actually called The Message and was much more of a police crime drama, where police officers investigate a rogue scientist whom created the creature all by himself after his mission was shut down by the government. The officers in question have to team up with the scientist in order to track the creature down, along with a biologist who had previously worked on the project, giving the story more of a mad scientist Frankenstein monster feel with cops. But feeling that this script had credibility issues, he changed the main protagonists from police officers to a special team assembled by the government, as we see in the film. Feldman started offering his script around to big studios, but none of them were interested. Or at least they weren't at that time. Number eight, bringing species to life. It was in 1993 when Feldman reworked the message into a spec script where he sent it to producer Frank Mancuso, who at that stage was most well known for producing the Friday the 13th sequels. Mancuso found the idea of the species script to be exciting and felt that there were many creative possibilities to achieve with the project. MGM then started showing interest in species, and although Feldman wasn't satisfied with the budget MGM were offering, he still signed on with the studio to produce the movie. Australian and New Zealand director Roger Donaldson came on board as director. He liked the idea of species, finding it to be fatal attraction meets alien. 
However, he was not entirely satisfied with the script and its scientific inaccuracies. Where the script would go for a further eight drafts, and even 48 Hours co-writer and producer Larry Gross came on board to do some touch-ups on the script. Number seven, Seal could have been battling Bond. Director Donaldson stated that most of the movie's budget would go into special effects, giving the movie's nature of an alien monster. So it's not the type of movie that had an emphasis on its actors. This is probably why the part of Syl was cast with Natasha Henstridge, who at that time was a former model, making Species her first movie role. As for the role of the cool, slick, but equally dangerous mercenary Press Lennox, Pierce Brosnan was originally offered the part. Brosnan was at a time when he was starting to break out into movies, as the previous year he had a minor role in Mrs. Doubtfire. However, he turned the role down to star in his first James Bond movie, GoldenEye, instead, which completely launched his career, where Reservoir Dogs actor Michael Madsen was cast instead. Incidentally, Brosnan and director Donaldson would go on to work together the following year in the volcano disaster movie, Dante's Peak. Of which, if you watch Dante's Peak closely, you'll see that it's just Jaws with a volcano. But that's a story for another day. Number six, the design of Sill. The alien designs of Sill were designed by legendary Swiss artist H.R. Giger, who of course is best known in the movie world for his design work for Alien, with the xenomorph being one of his standout achievements. I always felt that Seal kind of looks like a xenomorph, only spliced more with human DNA. In fact, several people have noted that the designs of Seal are more similar to many of his art pieces, which mixes erotica with grotesque horror. I really love the designs seen in Species. The only thing that I wasn't a fan of was that weird skull train in that nightmare sequence. And it seems that MGM didn't like it either, as they didn't want to shoot the sequence in order to keep costs down. Where Giger put in $100,000 of his own money in order for the sequence to be made and filmed. Incidentally, also at this time, Giger was approached to design the Batmobile for Batman Forever, where he designed what I like to call the Red Batman Scissors Mobile. As for the screams and cries the Sil alien creature makes, they were performed by legendary voice actor Frank Welker. In the original script, there was a love triangle between Sil and two of the government agents, and the ending where Sil births an alien child also wasn't in the original script. Number five, the effects of species. So with a huge portion of the movie's budget going towards special effects, MGM wanted the best of the best, and who else better to provide the special effects than Richard Edlund and his boss film studios. Edlund had worked on the special effects for many movies such as Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Poltergeist and Ghostbusters. I actually like the effects of the alien embryo and cocoons. It looks like a disgusting genetic puke mess, which adds to the out of this world horror of the movie. However, Species does also use a lot of CGI. This was back in a day when CGI was still in its infancy. And although the CGI looked impressive for its day, it has aged and does look slightly dated now. Heck, even modern CGI can look dated. The way I see it is a little bit of CGI goes a long way. Like Terminator 2, where it's just used for those brief shots where no other special effects techniques could be used. Species starts to borderline the overuse of CGI, but thankfully doesn't go too far, which, once again, modern films tend to do. Number four, bullying left a cast member to disliking the movie. When we see Syl in her child form, she is played by actress Michelle Williams, who three years after Species would go on to star in the teen drama Dawson's Creek, as well as going on to become an acclaimed film actress in her own right. Williams would have been about 14 at the time of filming, and although starring in the movie probably did further her professional career, it also gave her some real-life anguish too, where the actress supposedly got bullied by her peers thanks to starring in Species. I guess her classmates thought that having tentacles growing out of your face wasn't the in look. But in all seriousness, it's always sad when a child gets bullied, and I hope that now that she's grown up, she can look back at Species with at least some fondness. It seems that she wasn't the only star to dislike Species, as actor Michael Madsen would supposedly go on to call the movie lousy. Despite that though, he did go on to star in the sequel, which brings me to my next point. Number three, sequels. Species 2 came out in 1998 and sees the return of Natasha Henstridge and Michael Madsen. 
and this time the focus is on a male alien hybrid, whom gets infected by the alien genes upon doing an Apollo mission to Mars. The sequel is more gruesome and sleazy than the original, feeling more like an all-out splatterfest slasher movie. I loved it as a kid, but watching it as an adult, it does feel ridiculously over the top. But who knows, maybe some people might like it in a sort of Sharknado kind of way. I guess it's enjoyable enough, but it was trashed to the rafters by critics. The third entry was a straight-to-video release in 2004. Interestingly, Natasha Henstridge features at the start of the movie, but only at the very start where she is then killed off. As when she originally signed on for the role for the first movie, her contract was to star in a trilogy, so she kind of had to come back due to contract. The rest of the movie focuses on the character's alien human daughter, and from what I remember, a lot of this movie takes place at a college dorm, giving it a teenage movie feel. I didn't think it was awful, it just didn't wow me. Then in 2007, there was another straight-to-video entry called Species at the Awakening. Seriously, The Awakening, such a generic sequel title. Of which I haven't seen, and didn't really feel the need to watch when it came out. What I do know is that this entry isn't connected to the first three movies, and that it's its own thing, making it a standalone film. However, the negative feedback from fans of this movie doesn't really motivate me to watching it. And so thus far, Species The Awakening is the final entry in the series. Number two, novel and comics. During Species, we learn that Seal has a variety of powers, like super strength and the ability to regenerate and self-heal when she is injured. However, the movie's novelization goes deeper into the unearthly talents that Sil has, as she can visualize danger with colors that only appear to her. For example, inedible foods appear pink to her, which means don't eat. And if she comes across a potential mate and they are not healthy, they become green, which once again only she can see. This explains why she was suddenly put off by the nightclub patron when they returned to his house. Dark Horse Comics also released a four-part comic book adaptation of Species, and I love the artwork as it really captures the essence of H.R. Giger. Then in 1997, before the theatrical sequel, Dark Horse followed up with their own Species sequel, with a comic book series called Species Human Race, which honestly looks like one violent and scary comic. Yeah, sign me up for that. It's interesting to read for, if anything, to see what an alternative sequel to Species would have been like. Number 1. Biggest Opener for MGM Species was released in July 1995, and it made $17 million on its opening weekend, making it MGM's highest opening weekend for its time. And it was in the number 2 spot in the box office behind the more realistic space movie Apollo 13. All round, Species would go on to make over $113 million in the box office on its $35 million budget, making it financially successful. The film got average to brutal reviews by critics. It was felt that the movie had fun frills and spills, but also felt exploitative, giving the movie a sort of cheapness. My favorite review described it as Alien meets V meets Splash meets Playboy fantasies. Entertainment Weekly said that actor Alfred Molina's haircut is scarier than the alien creature itself. Ouch, that's mean. Like that's really, really mean. It's as if back in the 90s, before we had internet trolls, we had critics. The special effects were also criticized. Personally, I think the problem is the movie has two identities. On the one hand, it wants to be a serious, insightful movie about making contact with aliens and gene splicing. And on the other hand, it wants to be this cheesy splatter movie with a sexy lady, often not wearing anything, going around killing people. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, Natasha Henstridge is very easy on the eye. But in my opinion, the two different visions of the movie just don't really mesh well. Although I agree that Species isn't high art, I find it to be an enjoyable popcorn movie, and very much a product of the 90s. A movie that could only exist in the 90s. It's a fun watch, so watch it and relive the time when a terrifying alien being arrived in town looking for a breeding mate. I think Species has kind of become forgotten. I mean, I don't really hear many people talking about it, do you? But maybe it's time to dust off the old DVDs and give it another watch. It's a great movie that is perfect for mindless fun. Anyway, I'm Minty, and be careful the next time you go to a nightclub. If you meet someone, they may be an alien who wants to mate with you and then kill you to death. See ya. 
He'll eat to death. <laughs>